City Kids, it's Cameron, and I am so excited that you're joining me for church today. We are continuing and finishing our You Mad Bro series, where we've been talking about when Jesus gets really angry. Today, we're going to be talking about how Jesus got angry about people who excluded others. Before we get into it, though, I want to ask you a question. Can you tell me what that word excluded means? And what does it mean when someone is excluded? Being excluded is when somebody is left out or told that they can't be a part of something. Now, there are lots of instances where people can be excluded. I want you to share with those around you. When is a time when somebody's been excluded? Now, I'm sure you all had some great examples of sometimes when somebody got excluded, but some that I was thinking of was maybe at lunch, you've maybe seen that somebody was told that they can't sit with other people, or uh, sometimes people feel excluded like at sports games, like they don't feel like they can sit in the really fancy seats, they have to sit way up in the nosebleed seats and watch the game, so they feel like they're excluded from a really cool experience. Um, or like on an airplane, sometimes people who sit in first class versus the other people who sit in normal airplane seats can feel excluded that they're missing out from something really cool in first class. In some of these places that are really exclusive, which actually means it's not inclusive, they are excluding people, they are leaving out other people. So in some of these exclusive places, we oftentimes want to be a part of those things. Like, I know I want to sit first class, and I want to sit front row at the baseball game. And you know, sometimes people even sneak in to go and do those things. Um, they'll go and they'll sit where they're not supposed to and they're excited because they're doing something that they really want. But to the people who paid for those really nice tickets, they're angry that people are taking advantage of what this, of the situation because they spent extra money to get there, right? They paid money to exclude those people who can't afford to be in those places and have those luxuries or those nice things. Things like people being excluded from sporting events or lunch or uh, the airplane, it happens a lot in our own lives too and in lots of different ways. You know, sometimes people are excluded not just because of the money that they have to sit in those nicer seats, but people can be excluded for their race or their beliefs or the way that they live their life. People get excluded all of the time for just being themselves. And exclusion is what made Jesus very angry. Now, I've told you about the Pharisees a couple of times. If you remember, they're those people who make a lot of rules and want everybody to follow them. And they were the teachers of the Bible at the time when Jesus was around. And the Pharisees, they were people who excluded a lot of other people. The Pharisees excluded people who didn't obey their laws and rules, or they excluded people who were sick, or they excluded people who were poor. They were left out of this experience of what the Pharisees thought was a religious time where people got to meet with God and um, be religious and follow what they believed. But in reality, it was this super cool Christian club, so they thought, that was excluding lots of other people because they couldn't meet these rules or they couldn't follow everything that the Pharisees wanted them to do. That just wasn't their style. They lived their life differently than the Pharisees and they didn't want to have anything to do with people who lived their life differently. And sometimes we can be like the Pharisees with our excluding of other people because we are trying to look like good Christians or like good people who follow Jesus. This might mean excluding people who live their life differently than we do. 
the Pharisees, they didn't like people who were different from them. And sometimes we don't always like people who are different from us too, because it's scary and sometimes it's awkward and it's unfamiliar. It's not something that we're used to because somebody else lives their life differently and we don't like it. We want them to live like how we live our lives. But Jesus is trying to tell us to get away from that. Instead, Jesus is somebody who wants inclusion instead of exclusion. Now, Jesus was somebody who was different from everyone. He's very, very unique. And that's because he has this really cool thing where he's 100% God and he's 100% human. And the Pharisees, they didn't like that Jesus was different than them. But Jesus also, he kind of said a lot of the same stuff that they were saying, but he said it differently. You know, the Pharisees, they wanted to teach about God and the Bible, and Jesus wanted to do those things too, but he did it in such a different way than the Pharisees. Because remember, the Pharisees only cared about what they looked like and if they looked like they were being good Christians, and if they looked like they were following all of the rules. But Jesus, he didn't care as much about what you looked like. He cared more about what's in our hearts and what we feel and uh, what our intentions are. And Jesus, he warned the Pharisees. He told them, you guys are being way too exclusive. You are not including people in bringing them into the kingdom of God. Instead, you are being exclusive. You are leaving people out of what we want them to be a part of. In Matthew 23, 13, Jesus says this to the Pharisees. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees. You are hypocrites. You shut the kingdom of heaven in men's face. You yourselves do not enter, nor will you let those enter who are trying to. In this scripture, Jesus is kind of saying that the Pharisees are a lot like the people who hold the doors open for you, like into the hotel, or they're just holding the door open to be nice. But instead of holding the door open for everybody, sometimes they shut the door right on their face. That's what Jesus is saying to the Pharisees. Instead of holding the door open for people to experience God and be a Christian, they're shutting the door in front of people's faces and saying, here's all of the rules you have to follow before entering into our exclusive Christian club. But Jesus, he did not come to separate us from God. In fact, he came to do the exact opposite. Jesus came to earth to die for our sins. And if you remember sin, sin is what separates us from God. If God was right here, sin is in between us. Sin makes it so that we don't have as good of a relationship with God. And sin is what, should, what separates us from God. It shouldn't be people or rules or standards that are separating from God which the Pharisees, they were doing. They were separating people from God. They were shoving the door in people's face. But like I said, Jesus came to bring people closer to God, to remove this barrier of sin and make it so that we had a straight path to God, that we are able to go right to our Heavenly Father through Jesus instead of having this barrier or this thing in between us of sin. Jesus cares about everybody having an opportunity to experience God's love and God's grace. And that's why he came to earth to die for everyone's sin. He didn't say, I came to only die for the Christian people's sins. I didn't die for the people who look like they're doing the right thing. I, he didn't say, I'm here to die for all of the people who live in this country. No, Jesus came and he died for everybody. He cared about including everybody and giving everyone an opportunity to experience the love of God. Now, I want to read this story to you of a time when Jesus was 
inclusive. And it comes from Mark 10, verse 13 through 16. And it says this, Mark 10, 13 through 16. People were bringing little children to Jesus to have them touch him. But the disciples were upset about this. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He was indignant. He was angry. He said to them, let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for the kingdom of God belongs to all of them. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms and put his hands on them and he blessed them. This was one time in the Bible when Jesus got really angry at the disciples. He was mad that they were being exclusive like the Pharisees and stopping people from experiencing Jesus. But remember kids, Jesus didn't want anybody to be left out from experiencing God. And you know what? Sometimes we can be like the disciples and we can be like the Pharisees and we can put things in between people and Jesus because we think that it should be that way. The Pharisees, they thought that the only people who should experience God and um, reading their Bible are people who can follow all of the rules. And the disciples, they thought that the children shouldn't go to Jesus, that it was only for the adults. And Jesus was like, uh-uh, no way. Everybody can come and experience Jesus and experience love and experience God and experience grace. And you know, Hub City Kids, one of our mission statements is to tell other people about Jesus. And maybe instead of saying, tell others about Jesus, it should say, tell everyone about Jesus. Because Jesus makes it pretty clear, no one should be excluded from him and from being a part of the kingdom of God. And no one should be left out or excluded. Hubseed kids, let's pray. Lord, I thank you that you sent your son Jesus to bring us closer to you, God, and to make it so that we were not excluded from your love and your grace and what you bring to our lives, God. Lord, I pray that you give us the boldness and bravery to tell other people about Jesus, and not just other people, but everyone, God. May you open our hearts to people who are different than us, people who look different than us and act different than us, God. And may you just let us um, bring Jesus to those people as well, God. Lord, we love you and we thank you so much for who you are and how you sent your son Jesus to make a way so that we could be a part of your life with nothing in between us no exclusions. Lord, we say this in your name. Amen. Awesome Hub City kids. Before we go, we have one last thing to do, and that is our memory verse for the last time. Our memory verse is Ephesians 4, 26, and it goes like this. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Ephesians 4, 26. Let's do it for the last time. Ephesians 4, 26. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. If you tell your memory verse to your teacher, or if you send me a video of you doing your memory verse, I will get you a piece of candy. And it is the last time that you can do this memory verse. So go ahead and get that uh, and show that to your teacher or send it to me. I hope you have a great week, Hub City Kids, and I am so glad that you joined me for Sunday School today. Stick around for some discussion questions to do with your class or to do with your family. I love you. Bye.